Welcome back to We give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Thanks for coming on board with us this Tuesday afternoon. I know it's a super busy time of the year. We've got a lot of things going on between shopping and school events and parties and all that kind of stuff, wrapping, decorating, baking. Uh, so I appreciate you taking a few minutes to listen to what I have to say today. Tonight's today's topic is about intermittent fasting. Before I get into that, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first, we are doing a food drive for the local food bank. So if you have some non-perishable items in your house, look through your cabinet, look through your uh, pantry, bring it on down. You don't need to be a member. Just come on in. We're not going to harass you. It's for a great cause. Drop it in the box. We're going to get this stuff off to the town um, probably a few days before Christmas, probably the uh, 20th, something like that. Probably a good day to drop off down there. So if you got some stuff, bring it on down. We really would appreciate it. It's for a great cause. And if you have a friend or family or someone that's thinking about checking out Yes Fitness, we do have gift certificates here. So you are welcome to come by. You can take care of it over the phone. Probably can't do it through email or texting, but you give us a call or stop by, and we'd be glad to help you with that. We take gift certificates in any denomination. Um, so give that some thought. You may know someone that wanted to check us out, or you might have a family member or friend that just does come to Yes Fitness, and uh, it would be a great gift for them. The gift of health, the gift of longevity. A uh, quick reminder that we do have two special classes going on this month. We have a Jingle All the Way competition happening on Saturday, December 21st at 7 a.m. It is a four-partner workout. We had to bump it up to four people on a team because we have such large participation. So uh, it's a four-person team. You do not need to be a member to participate. So you can bring family, friends, guests, neighbors, whatever you'd like. But do make sure that they are exercising currently and they don't have any real uh, concerns or consultation exercise because they will be new to us and it will be difficult for us to make any type of changes. And um, in lieu of Christmas being on a Wednesday, Wednesday's a very busy day here, especially a metabolic workout day, we're going to run a special or an extra workout on Tuesday at 8 a.m. We're asking you to sign up for that as well as Jingle All The Way. This way I have an idea how many people are showing up as to whether I need to make some modifications to the workout to handle all those participants. And finally, a reminder that we do close at noon on Christmas Eve. We are closed on Christmas Day, and then we will be open on the 26th. We are taking a look at what hours on the 26th we're going to be open. It's more a big private day on the 26th on Thursday, so we're going to work our schedule around um, people's schedules on the 26th. It's typically a very quiet day. People are just trying to relax after the hustle and bustle of the four or five weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So... Um, just so you know, we will be open on those days. So that's just some housekeeping stuff for us right there. So let's get into our topic of the day, intermittent fasting. So, you know, the topic comes up with uh, various clients over time. I was speaking with someone this morning about it, and they were thinking about jumping into some intermittent fasting just to test it out, just to try it. So I thought I would talk about it a little bit because I've never talked about it. And there is some research that shows that intermittent fasting may improve your chances for longevity. So let's talk about it a little bit. So what is intermittent fasting? Well, it's a pretty simple concept. It's for a period of time that you don't eat. And with intermittent fasting, you break up your fasting periods with your eating periods. So it's, it's that simple. Um, you do it every single day. You probably don't even think about it. In simple terms, you typically eat dinner maybe at 8 o'clock, and then you don't eat breakfast again until 8 o'clock in the morning. So that 12 hours from dinner to breakfast is a 12-hour fasting period, and then you have a 12-hour feeding period from breakfast to dinner. It's that simple. Simple. Some people would prefer would uh, refer to that as a 12 to 12 fast because 12 hours on, 12 hours off. I know it's kind of weird that we have to come up with these complicated names, such a simple, normal eating pattern, but you know, you'll understand that a little bit better as we get further down into today's discussion. Um, so, you know, while it's popularity kind of seems to be soaring right now with a lot of new information coming out about it, humans have been fasting for most of our history. 
during sleep, in the times of famines, uh, food scarcity, there's some religious or spiritual reasons. So uh, modern day research studies have shown the effects of intermittent fasting, but it's been going on for a long time. It's actually, we started taking a look at intermittent fasting as an eating pattern all the way back in 1946. So here's a couple of things to think about with intermittent fasting. If you were going to try intermittent fasting, a trial fasting period is a way, great way to practice to manage hunger, okay? You need to learn to manage hunger. You need to know what hunger really is. You're not going to die if you don't eat for 12 or, four, or 24 hour period. Um, over time, it gets a little bit easier. Um, you learn to understand and feel that what is hunger and what really isn't hunger. Is it physical or is it psychological? And this is an essential skill for everyone who wants to get in shape and stay fit and to under and be able to do intermittent fasting. You need to understand and get over that that hunger feeling, whether it's physical or psychological. And you know, more regular fasting isn't objectively better for losing fat. So keep that in mind as we go to the discussion. Well, intermittent fasting works quite well. The intermittent fasting approach of bigger meals at less frequency may not help you lose any faster or better than the more conventional diet approach of smaller meals more frequently might have. So think about that as we go through this discussion today. Um, more regular fasting can make it easier to maintain or lower body fat percentage. So intermittent fasting isn't easy. It's not an easy thing to do. You need to, especially in the beginning, the first week or so, or two weeks of overcoming that that feeling of hunger. It has been shown that it might be easier to maintain your lower body weight and a very low body weight percentage versus more conventional diets. So there are some advantages to it. It seems like you're able to maintain that low body weight. And intermittent fasting uh, works, but it's not for everybody. Or does it need to be for everybody? In the end, intermittent fasting is just one approach, one of many among other effective ones for improving health, performance, and body composition. People have been losing fat, changing their body composition for years that were not on intermittent fasting. So just think of it as another tool, a tool to use to help to lose some fat. And in some cases, it actually gain some mu muscle. So it's not necessary, but it can be helpful for especially people that are in shape, who ideally have some health, same relationships with food, who want to really get lean without conventional body bodybuilding diets, or for anyone who needs to get lean for differences between body hunger and mental hunger. So you need to learn that kind of stuff. So it can also be... Um, useful tool when it can be done continually or it can be used periodically so it doesn't happen that all the time but again it's not for everybody and it's not the be all for nutrition or fitness um, so one thing to think about we get some questions sometimes about what is the difference between you know intermittent fasting Again, periods of not eating and some grazing, or we like to have five or six meals per day. So the thing to think about is successful nutrition plans, whether they're similar, more frequent meals, or grazing, or less, less frequent meals, they all share some of the same features. So we're thinking about this kind of share the same things. We're controlling energy intake. Number one, we're going to control energy intake, okay? We consume fewer calories, okay? We can we consume less energy or fewer calories than we burn. Um, we lose weight in ideally body fat, whether you take in less energy by eating less frequent meals or in frequent larger meals, it's up to you. But number one, thing that's similar is that we're going to control our energy intake. Two, we're always focusing on, on food quality, right? What you want is fresh, unprocessed, nutrient-dense foods. It's a must. It's regardless of whether you, 
whatever eating style you adopt, you absolutely have to have that. Three, regular exercise. Exercise is critical to the equation. So although, you know, the different eating styles, eating patterns, those three things are similar to all three. So whichever one you choose from, whatever lifestyle or personal preference you have, those things need to, you know, be kept in consideration. So what's the big hoopla? Like I said, intermittent fasting is nothing new. Humans have been fasting through history, whether it's during the typical overnight period or during extended periods of food scarcity or religious reasons. So, you know, why is it hot right now? What's going on? You know, you know, the, some of the bigger news is that research has shown that intermittent fasting benefits health and longevity. And that's beginning to catch up with that information. Data shows that intermittent fasting, when done properly, might help extend life. It'll help regulate blood sugar. It can control blood lipids. It can manage body weight. It can gain or maintain lean mass and more. So rather than something we are focused on to yeah. endure, a result of poor food availability or poultry, cultural expectations, Intermittent fasting is becoming something of a health and physique-oriented people are seeking out in order to keep their bodies in top shape. So people are doing this despite, you know, rather than being forced to do it, they're choosing to do it. And proposed benefits of intermittent fasting is in animals and humans reads like a laundry list of different things. More things than just looking better, feeling better, living longer. Physiological changes include this. And there's quite a few changes here. Okay. You can reduce your blood lipids. That includes decreasing triglycerides, LDL cholesterol. That is the bad cholesterol. It can help reduce blood pressure. That might be due to changes in the parasympathetic and the sympathetic activity. We're not quite sure yet. It can reduce markers for inflammation. Um, it can reduce oxidative stress using markers such as protein, lipids, and DNA damage. It can reduce the risk for cancer. Through a host of proposed mechanisms, too much for me to go into in this type of a podcast. But it can also do some things like increase cellular turnover and repair, which we want to have that happen. It can also increase burning fat. It increases fatty acid oxidation. It's a little bit later in the fast, but it can increase some fatty oxidation. And it can um, increase growth hormones um, that can that happen again later in the fasting. Okay? And it can increase metabolic rate a little bit later in the fast, not up front, but a little bit later in the fast, which can help stimulate epinephrine and neoepinephrine and things like that. So those are some things that can increase. It can improve your appetite control. Okay? It can improve blood sugar control by lowering blood glucose and increase insulin sensitivity. It can improve cardiac function by protecting against ischium injury of the heart. It can effectively increase effectiveness in chemotherapy. It can improve uh, neurogenesis. So, and those are some things that, you know, intermittent fasting can improve. So there's a lot of benefits, okay? And although it may be amazing, like sounds like a cure-all, but it's not for everyone, okay? Like I said before, everyone is going, everyone is doing it right now, okay? In most cases, people are going 12 hours every single day without eating between dinner and breakfast. Unless you're waking up at night and uh, raiding the fridge, you're probably already enjoying some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. You just don't know it. It's happening, you just don't even know it. Now, our current research is showing that some of the benefits may only be realized after longer periods of fasting, around 20 to 24 hours, depending on your activity levels. So for example, if you're fairly sedentary during the fast, you may need the full 20 to 24 hours without food to realize and get the benefits. However, if you're very active or you do exercise purposely during the fasting state, you may be able to enjoy some of the benefits only 16 to 20 hour period of fasting. 
So this kind of brings up a very important point. I strongly recommend you follow an exercise program regardless of whether you're experimenting with what, regardless of whether you're experimenting with IF, okay? Although exercise and IF or intermittent fasting share some of the same benefits, many researchers believe that, that their combined impact on energy balance and cellular adaptation enhances the benefit of both interventions. So we really want to exercise. However, in the absence of clear research data, this could only just be wishful thinking. So we really want to think about doing some exercise if we're going to jump into intermittent fasting. Um, as we talk about intermittent fasting, you want to realize that most of the research data is being done using animal models. Doing some research with humans, but most of it's being done with animal animals. So although animals, like rats and monkeys, are convenient test subjects, they're not perfect models for predicting human response patterns. So all the animal data suggesting strong benefits of intermittent fasting aren't necessarily helpful in predicting what will happen when humans try it. So when we look at the human data, we find disappointingly that experimenting experiments using intermittent fasting are very limited. Also those experiments that have been done often are poor experimental control groups. This makes the, the, you know, the information and the power of the predicting limited. I mean, just think about it. If you, you know, whether you have a standard, you know, rat chow, you know, uh, diet or a North American diet, which is, you know, Neither diet is best for health, body composition, performance, comparing study participants using intermittent strategies to those who use subpoenaed, sub, pardon me, suboptimal dietary intakes without fasting. Kind of actually stacking the de deck in favor of intermittent fasting. So we take these crummy diets and we all of a sudden go into a controlled situation with intermittent fasting you're going to get good results, right? And one reason why it's difficult for humans to get involved in these behaviors is because who wants to go and deal with intermittent fasting? Who wants to cut the food intake? So it's kind of hard to find people who want to do that. So that's why it's again, difficult to trust and get data on human beings. So what I have found is, in my own lifestyle and when dealing with people, is that the more people are more successful when, in this type of situation, when you have a history of monitoring caloric and food intake, and you've tried to diet before, which most people have, that you're already an experienced exercise. And maybe even if you're single or you don't have children, because this is not easy to do. You have a supportive partner if you have a partner. Again, it's not easy to do. And you and you work in an environment, your job allows you periods of low performance while you're adapting to the new plan. Because this can happen in the beginning of intermittent fasting. You may get low energy. You may be tired. You're not going to perform as well. So there's some things to think about before you try intermittent fasting. You should have already had dieted before and you should be already would be best if you're already eating the foods that we want you to eat and if you're already exercising and you have that support because you're going to try to make all these changes and as we know when you start to get try to make more than one change the success rate really plummets when you try to make three changes it's, it's really hard so so this is really much more challenging for someone who's new to diet and new to exercise, someone who's married and got kids and all that kind of responsibility and, you know, a job where they have to perform, um, maybe face-to-face -face with people, that's going to be more challenging. Um, and it's also going to be challenging if you're in sports or athletics because you are going to have a decrease in your performance. So, so also typically... Women seem to fare worse on stricter forms of intermittent fasting than men do. So in the beginning, I would say just kind of be relaxed about it. Take a relaxed approach about it. Just try to get started with it and, and make little changes as you go along. 
So there are many different approaches to intermittent fasting. And the most popular, most studied seem to be the alternate day fast and extended morning fast. We skip breakfast, for example. So let me, let's just take a look at some of the different techniques. Uh, we're going to go through some of them right here. So we're going to talk, talk, first talk about the alternate day fasting. That would be like a 36-hour fast and a 12-hour feed. So, you, so with this plan, you simply eat every other day. So on Monday, you'd eat within a 12 hour window, such as from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then you're going to fast overnight. You're gonna fast all day and overnight Tuesday. You would eat again from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday. That's a 36 hour fast and a 12 hour feed. So it's 36, 12. And you would just continue to alternate that. I mean, that's, You know, that's a difficult thing to do, to come out of the gate and not eat for 36 hours. Don't you think that's going to be a challenge? So you might want to just try and, you know, try for a few days and then have a day where you're going to eat what you want on a non-fasting day. Of course, with this, we're going to think about we need to get some exercise in here. We need to make sure, absolutely make sure that we're staying hydrated through this time period. Um, and think and listen to your body. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. So then we're going to just talk about um, one which is just meal skipping. So you just randomly fast and feed cycles, okay? Some intermittent fasting proponents believe we should fast the same we did during the evolution of our ancestors did. As they evolved, they got to food and eating and exercise randomly, therefore we should do the same thing. Uh, this brand of intermittent fasting includes eating unprocessed, evolution-friendly foods, think of the paleo-type diet, uh, randomly cycling daily calorie intake, and randomly skipping the breakfast or dinner once or more twice a week. These are very flexible, it's very random, it's one way you might want to try, um, so you can get used to that hunger feeling to figure out whether you're really hungry or whether it's psychological, whereas in that 36-12 period, that is really going to tax you and challenge you um, there. So then there's a plan that's called Eat, Stop, Eat, which is a 24-hour fast, one or two times a week. Um, on, this plan, you'd on this plan, you'd fast for 24 hours, once or twice a week, eating sensibly, consuming higher amounts of protein, minimizing processed foods, things like that. Get a lot of fruits and vegetables the rest of the week. It's flexible. You can choose whatever 24-hour period you want to fast from. You can fast from breakfast to breakfast, dinner to dinner. So there's a lot of flexibility with the eat, stop, eat, 24-hour period. Um, do keep in mind that more is not always better. So you may find as you're tracking your progress, that fasting once a week for 24 hours works well, and then when you try fast twice a week for 24 hours, you get less results, you're more fatigued, you're more irritable. So always keep in mind that more is not always better. And then there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's the lean gains, which is a 16 hour fast and an 18 hour feed. Um, that's a nice place to start. This brand fasting is based on an eight-hour feeding, feeding period with a fixed 16-hour fast. It also layers in a few other food rules on top of that. So it's just not just 16 and 8 if you're going to follow the lean gains. Um, you want to have a high protein contact because in the lean gains, this particular pattern it has been shown that you can gain lean muscle mass. You can gain some muscle mass doing this. Uh, so you want to make sure we get a high protein contact. We're going to cycle in some carbohydrates. You're going to include some fasting training. So towards the end of your fast, like let's say you're going to go 16 hours from um, dinner all the way to lunchtime the next day, 1, 2 o'clock, maybe noontime you want to exercise and we're gonna use some nutrient trimming. So you're gonna eat the bulk of your calories right after your exercise. So in that example, if you went from um, six o'clock dinner all the way to like, let's say, the afternoon before you eat again, you wanna get your exercise in, and then right after that exercise, when your fast is over, you're gonna eat as many calories as you can. So on this plan, you fast from like dinner until lunch the following day. You're gonna skip breakfast and morning snacks. 
If you plan to exercise, like I said, you want to exercise just before lunch. You want to think about taking about 10 grams of BCAAs, branched chain amino acids, during that training period. And then after training, you want to eat two to three meals during the rest of the day with your biggest meal coming after your exercise. The fast begins again, all over again, repeats day after day. And then we have what's called the warrior diets, which is a 24 hour, 20 hour fast, a four hour feed. So on this plan, you fast. We eat very lightly for 20 hours each day, working out during the fasting state. Then you eat your daily food intake within a four hour feeding period. You just load it up. After that, the fasting cycle begins again. Generally, most people place the, their four-hour feeding window at the end of the day. It's a little bit more convenient for family dinners and after your training sessions. However, the 24-hour fast and four-hour feeding can occur at any point in time of the day. You don't have to follow the 12, the 20, the, the dinner time plan. So uh, I mentioned a little bit more, a little bit minute more that there are differences between men and women. So men and women may not receive the same benefits from intermittent fasting. The research seems to indicate that a fair number of differences in men and women respond. Whereas women will see a rise in their HDL from fasting, men do not. And whereas men see a drop in triglycerides, women do not. No one know why these sex specific things are. With insulin sensitivity, men seem to have an improvement, whereas women usually do not. In fact, glucose tolerance for women has worsened during intermittent fasting trials. With that said, the trials have been short duration, and some more studies need to be done on this, determining the consistency true across all populations. Overall, the majority of research on intermittent fasting has been done on males, so again, it's unclear what the changes are gonna be on women or perimenopausal women. So, something to think about. And then, one topic that comes up a lot, so should I eat before training or after? The most important role of exercise in improving body composition is how it influences a 24-hour fat balance, rather than how much fat is oxidized during and immediately after exercise bout. So training fasted versus training fed for most individuals will therefore come to a personal preference in your goals. Neither appears to be superior physiologically across the board. So it's whatever you're more comfortable with. And think about this whole thing. So in conclusion, intermittent fasting appears to be one of the more potential helpful dietary approaches among many. It can be helpful with some, but it cannot be for others. And it may not have health improvements for all. So the best approach still comes down to build consistently in healthy habits, eating nourishing foods, and finding out what works for you. Okay? So just kind of a little bit of a review here. To lose weight, you need to burn more calories than you eat. Or conversely, you need to eat more less than you burn. Some people find it a little bit easier to reach their intermittent fasting, reach this through intermittent fasting, whereas others find it a little bit more traditionally eating smaller meals approach throughout the day. <sighs> Preliminary evidence suggests that fasting could have a unique metabolic effect, including life extension. But this stuff needs to be further confirmed from further research. Um, you know, just keep in mind the intermittent fasting isn't for everyone. People with impaired glucose controls should avoid intermittent fasting as it causes uh, poor glucose response. Also, if you're pregnant, if you're underweight, if you're younger than 18, you have a history of disorderly eating, probably not a good idea for you to have intermittent fasting. But to try to do intermittent fasting. So, um, Keep this in mind. Just first decide what's right for you and something that you're going to be able to maintain for a couple of weeks, okay? Try it first a little bit before you really go heavy into it. Try it for a few weeks. See what's gonna work at once. Or make small changes, okay? Start off slow. Make it gradual, okay? 
focus on the intermittent fasting approach rather than getting bogged down on all the details. Stay flexible with your do, your eating times, okay? Just be flexible with this. Know yourself, observe your own experiences, be careful, listen to it, gather your data, it'll give you some insight, it'll draw you some conclusions. Again, you need to do it for a couple of weeks to see if, if it's working or not. So give it some time. Don't just try this for a couple of days and say, oh, this doesn't work or this, oh, this is the greatest thing on earth. And expect that there's going to be some ups and downs. So stay open-minded to this. You're not going to like, no, I've never seen it in 30 years of being in this industry. I've never seen anyone lose fat consistently every week, week in and week out. So figure that there's going to be some up and downs. There's going to be some up and downs in, in you getting used to the eating this this type of pattern, okay? And focus on the quality of the process, not necessarily the outcome, okay? So these are some things you want to think about. Um, when you're going through this process. There's a lot to think about if you're going to get involved in intermittent fasting. Think about go slow. Think about what might work for you in the long term. And it might be a good way to just kick start, and do it for a little while, and then stop for a while. It's always a good idea. But it's interesting stuff, interesting uh, information, interesting, especially for longevity. Um, so you might want to think about trying it. And um, let me know how you make out. If you have any questions, certainly get a hold of me. I'd be more than happy to give you a hand, whether you call me, stop by to see me, uh, email me, or message me on Facebook. I'd be more than happy to give you a hand with this because it can be uh, a challenging um, protocol to do and changing your life. So that's it for today. Again, I thank you for taking some time out of this busy, ho busy holiday season to sit and listen to this. Um, if you uh, are looking for more information on how to get fit, feel young, live better, look for us next week, next Tuesday, 3.30, and uh, I'll hook up with you then. Thanks. Have a great night.